morning I woke up to the news that Benjamin Netanyahu will be in the Congress on July 24th. I think that presents Democrats with a huge problem of coming or not coming. What do you think? Yeah, you're already hearing some Democrats be vocal about the fact that they don't want him there. They think that the invitation was inappropriate. They're pointing to some sorts of double standards about when the Kenyan president was in town. So there is a lot of consternation, especially among the progressive members. You have Senator Elizabeth Warren, Senator Bernie Sanders coming out and just saying this invitation should not have happened. Uh, and, and, you know, there's a reason why Democratic leadership slow walked this invitation. They were worried about this exact sort of fallout. All right. Now let's switch over to the Veep stakes. I talked about this with Ben Dominich earlier. I was on News Nation with Leland Bittert last night talking about it. Six of the eight names from whom data and background have been requested by Team Trump are members of Congress. And so you you probably know Byron Donalds and Elise Stefanik are in the House. Our, our audience needs to know that. Senator Cotton, Senator Rubio, Senator Scott, Senator Vance. Does this list make sense? I didn't mention Doug Burgum or Dr. Carson because they're not in Congress. You're a congressional specialist. Does this list make sense to you? And if so, who stands out or what order do you think they are? the odds would ra- favor them? Most of the list does make sense to me. I think the one name that maybe surprised me a little bit was Senator Tom Cotton, just because if you had to sort of super generalize their foreign policies, you would consider Donald Trump to be more of an isolationist and Tom Cotton to be uh, a lot less of that. But other than that, I think it's a really strong list. And, I've, and you know, you have different factions of Trump world, of Trump allies pulling for different people there. I think there's a lot of enthusiasm about Senator Tim Scott that he has this sort of more gentle nature, more optimistic rhetoric than Donald Trump does, and he would be a good balance to that ticket. Uh, but there's also a school of thought of people that thinks he really needs a pit bull, an attack dog, to, to defend him against this onslaught of lawfare from Democrats, and somebody like potentially a Senator Marco Rubio might be better suited to fulfill that role. I'd like you to tell us a little bit about Elise Stefanik. Now, I, we are uh, alums of the same place, but I've never met her, and we have so many people in common, but I've never talked to her. She's never been a guest. I got to remedy that. Uh, Do you spend any time with her? Have you interviewed her? Do you have any idea what her uh, presence is like in a room? Because I don't. I've never spoken with her directly. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm on good terms with some of the people that work around her, but I know that she has a a great reputation. She's the highest ranking female Republican uh, in the house. And she's really made a name for herself by sticking up loudly for Trump, but also just for conservative causes. And so I think, you know, she's been building on this brand for quite some time, pushing back specifically against Democratic uh, investigations of Donald Trump. She's been really, really strong on the anti-Semitism on college campuses situation. And so I think that she has really positioned herself well for 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 that sort of job and also i think you know the idea of a female vice president on the republican ticket is really exciting for a lot of voters i don't think you would have a sarah palin situation here at least stefanik is pretty well tested in the national spotlight at this point representative stefanik took out two presidents of the ivies harvard and penn with about an hour worth of questioning uh that would appeal to a lot of people i think but that is the first time I think she's done something like that. Am I forgetting something? Very public. I know she's a conference chair. She works the ropes very well. But I've never seen her do a, a public decapitation like that before of a political witness. I think, yeah, in terms of concrete actions, that's for sure her most high profile one. I think that she has been inserting herself into the national conversation on you know issues for at least a year now. Um, And during the impeachment process of Donald Trump after 2020, she was really vocal in defending Donald Trump at a time when not a lot of Republicans were doing that. So but I think, yeah, in terms of scalps, uh, these are certainly the most high profile. So my my exit question, if you're looking for someone to do the Sunday shows and to defend and attack at the same time and never make a mistake, who would you pick on this list? That's really tough. You know, I think, again, Senator Tim Scott addresses a lot of Trump's weaknesses, but to attack at the same time, that's not necessarily his strong suit. I think he was he, his problem in the GOP primary was in part that he was just too nice to hit back. At least Stefanik might be the best pick for that sort of dual role. 